is my hair getting too long? I think it is. Hi there. Um, welcome to my language learning live stream, uh, where I try to figure out whether it's possible for me to get good at Japanese just using apps and YouTube videos and with uh, comments from some friendly friends down below here in the chat. Uh, it's nice to see you today. Um, it is midday Monday here in Hong Kong on the 30th of November 2020. Um, and this is being recorded live on twitch.tv uh, twitch.tv slash Anthony Kelly Yip and youtube.com slash a random bunch of letters and numbers. Why don't we have a good YouTube address, you may ask? That's because YouTube say that if you want to get your own custom address, your own custom URL, you need to have a hundred subscriptions. And I'm looking down here right now and we have 10. Now, you might say that uh, that's better than last week when we only had nine, but I know for a fact that that 10th subscriber is my sister. Hi, Sarah. So yeah, um, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel where I have some videos just walking around Hong Kong and catching Pokemon, then you can probably best find it by going to anthonykelly.live and there's links to my Twitch channel, YouTube channel, and to my Instagram and Twitter feeds over there as well, if you want to do that. Um, yeah, welcome to this stream. I am very much a beginner learning Japanese. Um, I don't know if you've watched this before, but I'm trying right now to get literate, which <laughs> to me means um, I'm trying to learn how to read Japanese right now. and the Japanese language has got three different character sets. There's hiragana, katakana, and kanji. And the best way to describe the first two, hiragana and katakana, is that I mean, an analogy that you could use is that they're kind of alphabets. And let me just jump into this app for a second. I used this a while back, hiragana pro, um, to learn Japanese characters. Okay, so this is the hiragana character set, and basically all of the sounds of Japanese are here. And these characters are used largely for Japanese words. And by that I mean words with a Japanese origin, because like as you know, when you study a language, you have loan words as well as you know native words. And Japanese words in general are written using hiragana. So you can see here at the top we have the vowel sounds a, i, u, e, and o. And then you have sounds which are made of a consonant followed by the, the those five vowel sounds. So under a you can see we have ka. Uh, under i we have ki, ku, ke, and ko. And it keeps going down sa, uh, shi, su, se, so. And this is the, the first character set that you need to learn. You need to get this down when you are learning Japanese. And I learned this a while ago using this app called uh, Hiragana Pro. It is available on the Google Play Store. I don't think that there is an iOS version available for this app, but there's other apps available. And as I'm going to show you in a second, um, Duolingo, which is the main app that I'm using right now, they also have um, some exercises in there for learning hiragana. So don't worry about that. That's fine. The second character set that you need to learn is called Katakana. And Katakana, again, okay, I'm going to load up. This is the sister app for the one that I just showed you. Um, this is Katakana Pro. And katakana has exactly the same sounds as hiragana. Uh, we have a, i, u, e, and o. And my pronunciation might not be perfect because, you know, I'm a, I'm still a beginner. Um, but yeah, underneath we have ka, ki, ku, ke, and ko. And then all of the other sounds here. So these sounds map perfectly with the sounds in hiragana, that, that first alphabet that I showed you. So the question is, why are there two sets of characters that we need to learn in Japanese? There's actually three, uh, but we'll talk about the third one a little bit later. 
Um, that's kanji. So these characters here, the katakana characters, are largely used for uh, loan words. That is, words that are borrowed from other languages. And they can be borrowed from English or they could be borrowed from, you know, anywhere that you like. And there is a huge amount of loan words in Japanese. It's a, it's a surprisingly large amount of, of words that, that you will come across. And some of them are easy to recognize. Some of them, not so much. And we're going to have a look at some of those in a second. Um, but it's useful having two different character sets because as soon as you see words written in katakana and not in hiragana, you're kind of primed, ready to... Um, you, you're, you're primed to look at this word as a not Japanese word, if that makes sense. So at first I thought that it was kind of difficult and uh, it seemed to be weird having two sets of characters to learn. But as I've been learning, I can see that it's useful to, to separate out the loan words from the native Japanese words like that. That said, I had a difficult time learning katakana. Um, I tried to, because I, I learned hiragana um, a few years ago. I tried to learn both of them a few years ago uh, before going on holiday to Japan. And I learned hiragana in a couple of weeks using the app that I've shown you and using some uh, videos on YouTube as well. And it was quite smooth. You know, I took my time with it, but learning hiragana was, was quite smooth for me. Katakana, on the other hand, I felt was more difficult. And part of it was probably that a lot of the words look similar to each other. I mean, I'm having a quick look here. We have ma, ma. down there. And then you can see in the middle, mu. mu, if you look across. So look at the M row, for want of a better word. We have ma, mi, mu, me, and mo. And ma and mu look quite similar. They're just kind of flipped around. Another one that would always get me was this one. So. So on the far right of the S row, so. So. And if we look, oh, where is it? It's hiding right at the end. Mm, is right there at the bottom. So, so and mm, mm. they look almost the same to me. And, you know, after a while, I, I'm starting to, to recognize the difference, but it, it wasn't easy. Um, so for the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to, you know, get Katakana down. I, I, I want to make sure that I can read this quickly and easily. Um, so I've been practicing. I've been practicing with Duolingo, which uh, we will get into in a second. Um, I've also been looking around for any uh, Japanese characters that I can see in my daily life. And I, I forgot to bring it for you. I've, we've got some like uh, products and things at home. Um, we bought some toothpaste from uh, Don Don Donkey the other day, and it had uh, it, it was from Japan, so um, it had Japanese characters on it. It's over in the bathroom. I'm not going to get it for you right now. Um, but I live in Hong Kong, and in Hong Kong, you see a lot of advertising for Japanese products. So I was in the train station the other day, and I walked past this ad for uh, hand and body wash. And you see a lot of ads in Hong Kong um, they, I think that for marketers in Hong Kong, um, they believe that Japanese products, real Japanese products, will sell better in Hong Kong. Uh, and it's, it's probably true. Uh, Hong Kong people in general do like buying Japanese things. And advertisers, advertisers will try really hard to make their product look Japanese. Now, the thing is, the products are not always Japanese. Uh, in this case, I believe this one is. Um, but let's just have a look at how this is written. You can see that there's 
Chinese characters written across the top. But in the middle there, they have added not the Japanese word not. And most Hong Kong people will recognize this character. Um, they wouldn't pronounce it as not. They would re they would say it as ti, which is like um, it's like an apostrophe s. It means that something belongs to something else. But a lot of Hong Kong people will recognize this character, but they also know that it's a Japanese word. And you will see a lot of advertising in Hong Kong where they have a whole bunch of Chinese characters and they will throw in a Japanese word and then have the rest written in Chinese so that Hong Kong people can read the whole thing, but they also get the feeling of it being Japanese. And this is used for products that are really Japanese products. It's also used for fake Japanese products um, or for products trying to appear Japanese. So like our um, laundry detergent in, in the bathroom is Ariel. And Ariel, I think, is, I think it's Unilever. So this is, this is a, an international company. But the Ariel laundry detergent being sold in Hong Kong has got Japanese writing on it. it. It's trying to position itself as being a Japanese product. And it's not Japanese. And at first, I think that they were importing Japanese packaging, like Japanese packaged Ariel into Hong Kong. Um, now, I've looked at the packaging. It's being printed in Hong Kong. So they are deliberately using Japanese characters here to make something sell better, to make it look Japanese. And here, you know, this, uh, this hand and body wash is Japanese, but you can see that they're using, how they're using Chinese and Japanese characters together to sell it to a Hong Kong audience. But if we have a look a little bit more closely, um, hold on a second, okay. You can see here some katakana characters. And then we have, now, again, I'm learning katakana for the, you know, kind of for the first time right now. Uh, under where it says hand and body, uh, it says handot, which is hand. And this one says body, uh, sopu, sopu. I think sopu should be soap, right? So this is hand and body, soap, handot, and, how do you say and in Japanese? Uh, body sopu. Now, my pronunciation might be off, but I can read that. And that's where I get to kind of how empowering learning katakana is when you are learning Japanese. Um, now, I've, I've tried learning different languages before. I, I learned uh, French and German at school. And then I tried to learn Dutch um, uh, when I was in college in the UK. And I learned Cantonese, and now I'm trying to learn Japanese. Um, it sounds like a lot. Most of those languages I learned to a very, very, very low level. But one thing that was always kind of cool while learning a language was finding loan words or finding words that look similar to a word in your own language. And for me, it felt like you were learning quickly, right? It felt like you were learning faster. Whether the loan word was, for example, learning French, if it was a French word that we also use in English, um, or in some languages you would have like an English word that is being used in that language, being able to instantly recognize a word makes you feel like you're better at the language, perhaps better than you are, right? I mean, I don't know how to say hand in Japanese yet, and I don't know how to say body in Japanese yet. I mean, really in Japanese, because, I mean, I'm looking at hand and body here. I'm pretty sure that there's a Japanese word for hand that is not hand up. There must be. I don't know what it is yet. But looking at these characters here, I get a feeling like I know what I'm looking at. And that's cool. That is very, very cool. I remember 
going to uh, McDonald's in Hong Kong when I first arrived. And that is the most Western thing that you can say. I, I arrived in Hong Kong and I went to McDonald's. Um, and finding out that the word for strawberry in Cantonese is si to bele, strawberry. Now, there is a Chinese word for strawberry, but in Hong Kong, if you go to McDonald's and you want a strawberry milkshake, you would ask for a si to bele lai shake. It's like, wow, that I, I could learn that in seconds. You know, it would have been faster for me to learn that than it would have been for me to learn a banana milkshake. So, yeah, katakana is a way of, for me, for highlighting that this might be a word that I already know. So, over the past week, I have been paying attention to different loan words. Um, and I've been learning uh, katakana through Duolingo. So, here are a few words that I came across. And I don't, the, the translation, I think, is at the bottom of the page. Um, Aisu. Aisu. What does that mean? Uh, Aisu sounds like ice to me. And looking at the bottom, hold on a second. Um, Aisu was ice cream. Now, I don't know if there's a full version of that. Is there like an Aisu cream? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Aisu, according to Duolingo, is ice cream. Um, I think, and I'm not sure about this, I think that uh, when I was traveling in Japan, that people also use the word aisu when ordering cold drinks, like an iced tea or an ice something else. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. What was this one? Uh, oh, no, no, no. I got this one wrong. This one was wrong. Okay. Uh, koi. Koi, maybe? Koi. Koi. This word koi in English is carp. And I don't know, I always thought that koi was a native Japanese word. So I'm not sure why it's written in katakana and not hiragana. Um, but you see koi carp, right? Those, those giant goldfish. Koi. Okay. This is one that I wanted to, to share with you. Um, this one is kasa kasa. Now, uh, I'm not sure where the emphasis should be, whether it should be uh, kasa kasa or kasa kasa. I'm not sure. I'm just reading this. Um, but kasa kasa is a rustling noise. And you get that a lot in Japanese as well, where they have uh, two sounds like sounds repeating themselves, to be the sound of something. Like the sound of rustling is kasa kasa. Is that called onomatopoeia? I, I should know that. Uh, kasa kasa is a rustling sound. So what is that? Is that like walking through dry leaves or something? Kasa kasa. Okay, so this was where I was earlier in the week. I've been slowly working my way through all of the uh, katakana characters in Duolingo. Okay, here's another one. Sausu, uh, sausu, is that right? Sausu, uh, which means south. And when I saw this one, I remember thinking to myself, like. Why are they using the English word south and not the Japanese word for south? And then I thought to myself, and, you know, this may or may not be true. Um, there are place names with south in them. Like in the U.S., you would have South Dakota. So I'm wondering, is South Dakota, South Dakota, maybe? I might want to look that up. Hold on a second. I am going to look that up. Um, okay. Let's have a look. We have South Dakota. Ha! I think it is. South Dakota. Google's pronunciation was kind of different from mine. South Dakota. South Dakota. South 
So yeah, I'm guessing that Salsu is the version of South that you would use when using names with South in it. Because you do have like you have names like North this or South that and they use katakana for that it seems. Now if I delete the word South Dakota uh, sorry, if I delete the word Dakota here and I just search for South, I get this word. Minami, and it's it's shown the kanji character there, Minami, and that would be the Japanese word for South. But in a name, I guess we can use Sausu. Okay, let's get back to uh, the katakana that I've been looking at over the last week. Okay, this was a good one. So um, for every lesson on Duolingo, uh, for katakana or hiragana, they'll explain a little bit about what you're learning before you begin. And it says here, here's uh, four more characters. A, what is this? It says, it is a small type of dog. That first character is, uh, you can see that at the top in blue. That first character is chi. And then the second character is wa. So it's a chihuahua. I think that's great. Um, so I can now say that I know the word chihuahua in Japanese. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean that my Japanese is good. It doesn't. But I know how to say chihuahua. Okay, what was this one? Uh, I'm not looking at the bottom just yet. I'm just looking at the top and trying to remember what it is. You can see the bottom. My, my screen is quite big, so I can look up here without looking down there. This is sukoa. Score. Score. That that I think that's like if you're watching sports or something that you have a score. Okay. Misu. Misu. Now I remember seeing this one and thinking that it was strange and wondering why it was written like this, uh, because I was thinking like uh, miso, like miso soup, but it's misu. And it tells me here that it is, oh yeah, mistake. A misu is a mistake. I think that we really need some Japanese people in the chat to tell us whether or not uh, we whether or not this is correct because it might be a uh, misu. Okay, okay, we got chihuahua. We know that chihuahua. Okay. Um. Okay, this was another one, and I remember this one. Uh, I did have some Japanese lessons a while back, and I was learning with a book called, hold on a second, let me just find it. This book, this is uh, Mina no Nihongo, um, Everybody's Japanese. And this is the kind of like the go-to book for people learning Japanese in Japan. It will probably have a different cover if you buy this one in Japan, because I think that this one, this one was published in um, Taiwan. So it has a, a different cover to the, uh, the Japanese version. But a lot of students studying in Japan will study with this book. Um, it's a good book. It's a little bit boring. But one thing that I remember from this book, um, was that they introduce characters from different countries. And they always write their names in katakana. And one of the characters was from Thailand. And the word was this word right here, Thai, 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 Thai. So, okay, I think that we can add that to the list of uh, country names. I'm from the UK. How do you say UK? How do you say United Kingdom in Japanese? Oh no, I haven't had lessons in a while. And I haven't come across this in Duolingo. Was it Ikirisu? Ikirisu? Maybe? Hold on. I've got to check this one. Okay then. United Kingdom. America was much easier. Ikirisu. Okay. Let's check the pronunciation. 
イキリス。So I have remembered some of it. Okay, so if you are from Thailand or you want to speak about Thailand to a Japanese person, Thailand is Thai. Thai. Okay, oh, I, I just saw what it said at the bottom. I thought this one was great. Okay, then, this next word is kissu. Kissu. Which means kiss. I'm going to remember that one as well. Hold on, I'm just going to kiss some coke. Not a sponsor. Kissu. Was that my last one? No, it wasn't. Okay. There was another page that I wanted to share with you. And this one, when I saw it, it, it looks strange. So let me just read this introduction to you.、Um, let's learn to read katakana. Remember that the R sound is similar to the sound in the middle of the word kitty. Hello, kitty. And I saw that, and before reading the rest of it, I thought, what are you talking about? How does the R sound in Japanese? Because I was thinking the R sound in Japanese is it's in your mouth, it's not really kind of vocalized that well, it's kind of on your tongue. And I was thinking that it was like somewhere in between an R and an L, perhaps. But I never thought that it would be a T, like kitty.、Um, that, that didn't make any sense to me、uh, until I read the next part. The middle of the word kitty in North American English. Kitty. Kitty. Not kitty. Kitty. So you have words like ri, ri, this word here. And I can hear it. Kitty. Ri. It's close, right? It really is. So yeah, when I read that for the first time, I thought. That's ridiculous. How can it be a T? But it is that kind of like North American kitty. Ri. I thought that was pretty cool.、Um, and it highlights、uh, maybe a problem when learning a language, or this is a, a stumbling block when learning languages for the first time. And that is, and it sounds obvious, it sounds really obvious. Japanese is not English.、Um, or, and it is not your native tongue. So even if you see Japanese characters written out using English letters, those sounds are not going to translate. And sometimes when you look at it, I mean, you might look at RI and think RI or RI. And that's not. How it's going to be pronounced in Japanese. And you're going to have to train yourself to recognize the sounds of the language that you're going to learn.、Um, when I learned Cantonese for the first time,、um, Cantonese is a tonal language, which means that the word ma and the word ma, okay, ma and ma are different words.、Uh, ma would be mother. Ma is horse, <laughs> and you don't want to get those confused.、Um, <laughs> ma, ma. And when I first learned Cantonese, I, I had the, the, the Chinese characters in front of me, and I would think Ma, M A, Ma, M A. And if I read that in English, I would pronounce both words the same way. And that's not how. Cantonese works.、Uh, to buy something in Cantonese is my, and I might write that my, M A I, perhaps. To sell something in Cantonese is my. My, my. And unless you kind of internalize the characteristics of the language that you're learning, so in the case of Cantonese, Um, it's tones that you have to learn to, to hear the tones and to say the tones and to know that the tones are a part of the conversation and a, of, of the vocabulary. And once you've got that, it 
becomes easier. You, you can ignore the way you would think about the word in English and the way that you might write that word down in English. You just focus on the, the Chinese word. And I feel like in Japanese it's the same, right? That yes, we have this, this alphabet, a, i, u, e, o, and you can write it in English, but it's not English. And you have to, you know, as soon as you can, you know, try to get to the point where you see a word written in katakana or you see a word written in hiragana and you just see it and you say it, right? Without thinking about how it's spelled or thinking about the letter K in English or the letter R in English or in whatever language you're speaking because you're going to be wrong. Right? And you're going to sound like an English person speaking Japanese or an English per person speaking Cantonese in my case. And, you know, that's not what you want. You want to sound closer, as close as you can to native speakers. So at least they understand what you're saying. So, yeah, I, I like this. Kiri, kiri, ri. Uh, but it was a little bit counterintuitive. It's, it says here, it also sounds a little like a D. Again, I didn't think it did. And sometimes like an L in leave. Okay. I, I know that there are characters in, in um, Japanese, we're not talking Cantonese right now, that depending on the word might be pronounced differently. And yeah, we're going to have to learn those. And I think that's a uh, a bridge that we'll have to cross when we come to it. Okay. Ra, ra, like in <laughs> meta, I would say meta, North American English. Meta, meta, ra, ra. Okay. Let's keep going. What was this one? Ah, this was a word that we did last week because I had those chocolates, which I don't have with me today. Um, koalas match. Koara. 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 Koala. Okay. What was this one? Sign. Sign. It says here that sign is a signature. Sign. Which, you know, you can guess where that word comes from. Um, I don't know whether this would be used as like a noun in Japanese, like next to where you write your signature. Would they put the word sign? Or is it a verb telling someone to sign? We'll have to find out that at some point as well. So yeah, um, these are all the things that I've noticed during the last week. Um, I've been trying to keep my eyes open for more katakana in my daily life. And in Hong Kong, that's a little bit easier because you will see, even though people in Hong Kong speak Chinese, um, but there's a lot of Japanese products around. So there, there is more opportunity for me to pay attention to Japanese writing in my daily life. Um, but even without that, apps like Duolingo, which we're about to jump into, are pretty useful too. Now, I don't know if you have added me on Duolingo, um, you can. Let me just jump down here at the bottom. And um, if you want to add me on Duolingo, my username is right there at the top. I'm not sure if you can see it. It is Anthony Kell, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-K-E-L. Um, and you can follow me over there. We have uh, four, uh, 23 followers right now. And that way you can... Uh, keep an eye on me to make sure that I'm studying every day. And if you're studying a language, I can keep an eye on you too. Hold on a second, I'm crying here. Probably because I'm not studying hard enough. Okay. I'm looking at this. Uh, you can see the leaderboard here. Some people are working really hard. Let's see what Nick's doing. Nick's Japanese is great, by the way. Uh, but Nick hasn't been studying this week. Um, he learned a little bit of Japanese. I think that he didn't need to learn that much Japanese because uh, uh, his Japanese is excellent already. Uh, but he's been learning French and Italian, but not this week. I'll have to send him a message to uh, ask him to study a little bit harder. 
Um, but you can see that blue line across the bottom, that is his lack of study. Um, the gray line across the top is what I've been doing. So you can see that on a Tuesday and well, on Wednesday, I did quite a lot. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, I haven't been working that hard. But I have been trying to do it every day. And having a daily habit of learning something is, it's useful. Because I find that like once you fall out of the habit, it's really easy to quit. And to be honest, my whole reason for doing this live stream is to kind of force me to, to keep studying. So uh, that's a little bit of pressure on me. So yeah, let me show you what I've been doing. So in Duolingo, they have a whole bunch of lessons and you, you might have looked at this before. Um, and this is, this is the main kind of course page, the main topic page. Um, and it starts with hiragana, greetings, katakana, and intro. I can't remember whether that was introductions or whether it's an intro to, to the language. Um, I haven't studied this part for quite a while. I, I did um, Hiragana 1 on a stream a couple of weeks ago, but this hasn't been the focus of my study. It will be. My, my goal right now is to get good at Katakana first so that I can read the characters more easily. But you can have a look down here. They have a lot of different topics, food, time, routines, restaurants, family, uh, vacations. And there's a lot of things in here that you know, should be useful as you progress through learning a language. Um, how useful it is, is to be seen. I still don't know whether you can actually get good at a language using apps, uh, but I'm getting better. It doesn't mean that I'm good, but I am getting better, I believe. So anyway, let me just show you what I've been doing for the last week. Um, there, there is a new section, I believe, uh, in Duolingo, and they have Let's Learn Hiragana and Let's Learn Katakana. Look at all those yellow things here. Uh, let's Learn Katakana. And these are new exercises designed to teach you characters and to help you to get familiar with characters. And when I started, when I first tried to learn Japanese a couple of years ago, Duolingo didn't have this. So I had to use another app, which was uh, Hiragana Pro and Katakana Pro, which are great, by the way. If you've got an Android phone, please download them. Um, but now we've got this as well. And I just want to show you how it works. So I've been doing at least one lesson here every day. OK, learn the characters. Oh, OK, then um, this is just going to review the characters that I've already learned first, and then it should teach us some new characters later. OK. Select the correct answer for you. Now, I think I know what it is. I think the first one is you. you. The second one is ta. ta. Okay. The next one is e. e. And the last one is ko. ko. And again, like when I first started learning Japanese, I, I would have little tricks for trying to remember uh, the characters. So... For example, ko, uh, I kind of paid attention to the corners of the character, and that reminds me that it's ko. And that's in contrast to another character called uh, ro, which goes all the way around. So I think round, ro. I don't know, it's just a little thing that kind of I keep in my mind to help me to remember it. But yeah, select the correct character for you. Okay, we're doing well. <laughs> it's a good start. Okay, what did she say again? Hmm, is that... Hey, Pumpkin Face X, thank you for following me. Um, hold on a second. If you want to leave a comment down below, like if you know the answers to some of these questions and I don't know them, then please do. Zu. Okay, what have we got here? I think that's a zu. We have me. Zu. She. She. And hmm. Mm. Now, there are two characters here that look almost the same. And these two characters were so annoying to me when I first started learning. And that was this one. Z. Z. 
and this one, shi. Shi. Okay? Zu and shi. They look almost the same. And the way that I remembered it was from the way that you write it. And I'm going to have to show you some、um, hiragana here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So the hiragana character for zu is on the fourth row down, three across. Zu. Zu. Can you see it there? And the way that I remember it, I'm going to try and get this the right way around, is that zu is written this way in hiragana. So it starts at the top and you work your way around, right? The other word was shi. Where is shi? Shi. 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 Okay, that's three rows down, two across. And shi goes down and then it goes up. So zu is going around that way. And she is going down and out. Okay? So remember that for a second because I'm going to go back to Duolingo. And you can see here, zu. Zu. it's one line, two line, and then down. And I don't know whether that's the correct direction to be drawing it or not, but it goes around and down, kind of like zu in、uh, hiragana. But this word, she, it's One line, two line, and then going up. And that looks a little bit like she. So if I see these two characters now, sometimes I get confused for a second, but I can remember them a lot more easily now than I could before. Sorry, what was the word again? Z. Z. It's that one, isn't it? I could be wrong. If I'm wrong now, then that's going to be embarrassing. There we go. Okay, then what have we got here? We have got mi, mi, ri, ri, i, i, and zu, not shi, zu.、Um, and okay, while I'm trying to, to practice this,、um, I don't just pick the right answer and go on to the next question. I will look at all the characters that they're presenting to me and I try to remember what they are. And the more that you do that, the easier it is to kind of like recognize it quickly. So I would look at a page like this, and sometimes even before reading the question, I would just look at it and, okay, me, ri, i, tu. And make sure that I remember all of the characters first, check that I'm right, and then do the answer. Got it right. Okay, we have ra. And I haven't looked at the page yet. Okay, so I'm hearing that and I'm hearing ra. And I would try to, and it sounds like it's a lot of steps, but when I hear a character, I often do this when I'm on the train with my headphones in. So I'll click onto the next question and I will hear the,、uh, the pronunciation of the word straight away. And I'll try to imagine what does that word look like in katakana? And I think ra has a line across and then like that underneath. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's it. Ra. Ra. So I will try to remember the word even before looking at it. So this is one that I, last week I got mixed up with this one, but I can remember what it is this week. It is. <laughs> Wa. Wa. <laughs> okay. Ko. Look at the corners. Ko.、Uh, we have u. u. That sounds like gu. I don't know if you can hear it on the microphone. I don't know if my pronunciation is wrong or if the pronunciation on Duolingo is wrong.、U. It sounds like gu. But this is u and ra. ra. Yay! Four in a row. Okay, then. For this one, I'm going to just focus on the left hand column and ignore the right hand column for a second. I'm going to try not to look at the right hand column at all. So we have zu, ri, u, ra. And you. Okay.、Um, and the reason that I did that is I don't want to see the English characters and to, to have any hints or tips for what the answer might be. So I'm going to try to read them first. Okay, we have you. You. Two. Two. And ra. ra. Yay. Okay, let's keep going. Keep it up. 
today there are 11,707 learners practicing right now. And there is not 11,000 people watching me in the live stream. Yuri. Yuri. Okay. You, is that you? And then Ri. Yuri. Uh, you. you. Ri. Di. Okay. Now, if you look at the top of the page, you've got the big speaker button. Yuri. And then there's the turtle speaker button. Yuri. 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 And that can be useful. Uh, Yuri. Uh, especially if you're learning like long sentences. When you get onto the exercises later on, uh, the, the main exercises, there's quite a lot of sentences and things that you need to translate. And turtle speak can be useful. At the bottom, we also have me, ko, and Okay. Tura. 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 And that would be okay. At the bottom we have shika, tuka, tura. 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 I don't know what that means. Now because it's katakana, it could be uh, a loan word, but it doesn't sound like a loan word to me. Tura. Hopefully, Duolingo will tell us what it means. It didn't tell us what it means. Can we find that? What does that mean? Okay. We are changing to a Japanese keyboard. Do you know how to use a Japanese keyboard? Okay, this is the Google Japanese keyboard. And it has um, a, ka, sa, Ta, na, uh, ha, ma, ya, ra, and wo in, uh, or wa, wo, wa, <laughs> wa. Okay, it has all of the A vowel sounds on the keys, but if you want to get the other sounds, like a, you, you also want to be able to say i, u, e, and o. So if I hold a, and I pull it to the side, it will give me i. If I push up, I get u. If I push to the other side, I get e. And if I pull down, I get o. Now, I had the Google Japanese keyboard before, and it used to have these little um, tips on the keyboard to tell you which way to pull it to get the different sounds. It doesn't have that anymore. So, like, it used to be able to see on the at key, the e, u, e, and o. I don't know how to turn that on right now. Um, I don't know what I'm doing with this keyboard. So, right now, I just have to try and remember it. A is a tap. E is a pull to the left. Uh, u is a swipe up. E is a swipe right. And o is a swipe down. We want to ra. Where is to? Is that on the S column? <laughs> you can see that I'm not good at this. Okay, to is on the T column. Okay, T. Okay, let's go back to here. To ra, uh, T a i u, to. Okay, we got to ra. To ra is hard. To ra. Maybe. Hopefully the uh, hopefully Duolingo will tell us what this means later. Tura. Okay, I haven't looked at the top yet. We have uh, shita, uh, tan, tashi, and tatsu. 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 Okay, right now Duolingo isn't telling us what these words mean. Kara. Kara. Maybe like kara. Is that empty? Kara okay? <laughs> Karate. Kara. Kara. Uh, kira. Uh, tsura. Yura. Kara. Okay, we've got shika. Uh, tsuka. Tsuyu. Uh, koka. And yuka on the side, I think. Yuka. Yuka. Koka. Koka. 
つかしかしか This is taking a while, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> this is terrible content, isn't it? Oh, that's a little bit hard to hear. I've got headphones on. I can't hear what that is, can you? I can hear a ta at the end. Ta. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got at the bottom. We've got o, shi, zu, n, and ta. And it sounds like the second character is ta. So I'm going to guess that it's a zu. Ta. Zu ta. Zu ta. Ivy. Oh, you tell me what that word means this time. Kari. Kari. What do you think kari is? I've got an idea. I think I know what kari is.、Um, okay, kari. We've got kara, kari, yuri. I'm going to hazard a guess here that kari is curry. It doesn't tell me. Okay. Let's get back to Google Translate. Ka, 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 ri.、Uh, where's ri? Kari. Oh, hold on a second. Ka, ri. Oh, I just wrote kashi. Kari. So, when you, when you write in.、Um, On, a, on the Japanese keyboard, the characters on the keyboard are using hiragana. But because the sounds are the same, it will present the kanji word,、uh, the hiragana word, and the katakana word on you know, these uh, uh, options at the top. I'm going to guess that kari is maybe this one? No, that's crisp. Kari t s u I don't think that's right. Hold on, let me try again. Kari. It might be this kanji word down here. Potassium? Kari. Maybe it's not curry. <laughs> um, okay.、Uh, we have shitsu, katsu,、uh, tsun, mitsu, 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 shitsu. Shitsu. Katsu. Katsu. Tsun. Tsun. Mitsu. Mitsu. Okay. Chiyu. Chiyu. Okay, so here we've got yuka. Ayu. Like Ayumi. Like Hamasaki Ayumi.、Uh, Kayu. And Chiyu. What was the original word? Chiyu. Chiyu. Excuse me. Okay. Again, I'm just looking at the left. I'm not looking at the right. We have Rasu.、Uh, wara? <laughs> I'm still confused by this one.、Uh, ura, Kara, Kira. Rasu. Rasu. Wara. Wara. Ura. Ura. Kara. Kira. Kira. And remember that it doesn't matter that we don't know these words yet. I would like it if they showed us what the words were,、um, but it doesn't matter that much because right now we are trying to learn the characters. We're trying to learn to be able to read katakana. So It doesn't really matter whether or not we can actually read them, like whether or not we actually know what they mean for now, because we're just trying to get used to the, the characters themselves. Risu. Risu. Is that Risu or Misu? Risu. 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 Okay, we have Ri. Ri. Su. Su. The other characters down there are A, Tsu, and I. We're doing well. Great work. Let's make this more challenging with less sound. Okay, these are the hard exercises. So, 
before when I was pressing the characters, it would sound the characters every time that I pressed it. Now it's not going to do that. So here we have do. See, didn't say anything. So I don't I don't need to hold it up like this right now. Do. Um, she. Me. And. Mm. And they want us to use the correct character for do. We got it right. I am no longer confused between do and she. Okay, I think I've got this one. I think it's that. Here we have tu, tu, i, a, and li. We're doing well. We haven't got any wrong yet. Normally I've made a stupid mistake by now. Okay then. Again, just looking at the left, we have ri, uh, tu, ra, shi, and yu. Yu, shi. Ra, tu, and ri. Dam. Hold on. Dam. Dam. I don't know what that is. Ran, maybe? Ra, n. Ran? Okay. Uh, which one is tu? We have shisu. To me, you me, to you. We're gonna get them all right. Katsu. Katsu. Okay. We have katsu, kara, uh, satsu, shitsu. Look at those side by side. Look at them. <laughs> How similar they are. It kind of looks like two smiley faces. <laughs> okay. Uh, katsu, right? Katsu. Katsu, that's this one. Okay, we have Shimi, Kan, Rin, Yumi, uh, San, Yumi, Rin, uh, Kan, Shimi. Lunch. Lunch. Do you think you know what that means? Listen again. Lunch. Lunch. Ranchi. Is that lunch? It is lunchtime in Hong Kong. I, I might just be uh, thinking about food right now. Ranchi. Ranchi. It's lunch. And you can think a little bit here about how the L and the R sound uh, are kind of the same sound in Japanese. Um, that you know, in English, R and L are quite distinct sounds, um, but in Japanese, they're they're much closer to each other. It's it's the same the same word. So, even though if you were writing this out in English, ran chi, ra would be R A, um, n is an N, chi C H I, right? But that would be the 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 characters that they would use for lunch. Yay! They say that I am 35 XP away from my daily goal. I haven't been meeting my daily goal every day this week. Um, I have gone through one exercise a day. Um, there was one day when I did it at something ridiculous like 11.55 at night because I didn't want to lose my streak. Um, but yeah, Advertising helps fund Duolingo's mission. Okay. There we go. I think we are doing quite well with our uh, uh, katakana study. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, there was one thing that I wanted to show you. I, I, I forgot about this. Um, let me just see if I can find it. Because last week I was talking about how when you study... For, for Japanese kids, when, when they're growing up, they don't learn kanji straight away. So remember I said that there's three different character sets in Japanese. Um, there's uh, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. And kanji is words based on Chinese characters. And so if you look at, and if we go back to that 
add that we saw earlier. Okay, so you can see here that some of the words at the bottom don't look like hiragana or katakana. They look a lot more complicated than them. And those are characters based on Chinese. And if you look at a sentence in Japanese, you'll see hiragana, katakana, and kanji all being used in the same sentence. Uh, but little kids, when they're growing up, they don't learn kanji straight away. Or there could be a lot of kanji that they don't know yet. And you'll notice this if you watch like anime, uh, if you watch the uh, some Japanese cartoons on TV, uh, they often have a a song at the beginning or the end of the show, and it will have the lyrics to the song across the bottom of the screen, and you'll see hiragana, katakana, and then there'll be a kanji word in the middle of it, and then they have I think it's called huri. Hiragana. Um, they have hiragana characters above the kanji word, and they're written tiny. And those words are there so that if you don't know the the kanji word, you can read the hiragana above it. Um, there's no hiragana here on this page, but that's something to look out for. But when kids first start learning, I believe that they learn hiragana first, before they learn anything else. And then they learn katakana and kanji. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to show you was, uh, as you may know, I do play Pokemon Go quite a lot. And there is an app called Pokemon Home. Oh, sorry, that was very noisy. There is an app called Pokemon Home. Okay. And am I going into this for the first time? Or is it just going to log back into my account? Okay, it's just logged into my account here. The reason that I wanted to show you Pokemon Home is because in the language settings, which are hidden away somewhere, let's check in the options. Um, application, perhaps. Language. Okay, look at this. So the language for Pokemon Home here is English. Um, but here there's two different Japanese options. There is Nihongo Hiragana and Nihongo Kanji. Okay, so those are those, you know, characters based on Chinese that you can see at the bottom, uh, and then Korean as well. Um, so this is quite useful for like young kids who might not have learned the Kanji yet. I can set this for hiragana, okay? And now my app is all in hiragana. Uh, ah, actually, no, there is some katakana in here as well. So they were lying. Uh, oh, mayorumu, mayorumu. What do you think that means? I'm thinking mail room. Okay, uh, Pokemon. Ah, Pokemon. Okay, so we've got some katakana here, Pokemon. Maybe that says mail room. I'm not sure. Uh, and then we have Kolkan. Okay, so for young kids, they could actually use this app, and they could use it all in hiragana without worrying about the kanji, or. If you're a student learning Japanese for the first time and you like Pokemon and you have Pokemon Home, I, I don't know if the other apps will do this, uh, you could use this Hiragana Katakana version um, of the app first so that it's a little bit easier to understand. Oh no, it's all in Japanese now. How do I change it to uh, Kanji? Okay, I think it was over here. Okay, Nihongo Hiragana. Let's change that to Nihongo Kanji. Okay, it's changed now. And now you can see what I was talking about before. So there are still Hiragana and Katakana characters here, but then you will also find a lot of Kanji mixed in. Um, for me, I can read some Kanji just because it looks the same as 
Chinese and I live in Hong Kong. So it's a little bit easier for me to read kanji. So I can see at the top that this is settings because the word for settings in Chinese and in Japanese is the same. It's written the same way, but it isn't pronounced the same way. So I could see a character here and, you know, people who uh, speak Chinese or who can read and write Chinese and who learn Japanese for the first time, they will be able to guess a lot of the meanings of what they're looking at just because they recognize the kanji. It doesn't mean that they can say it the way that a Japanese person would say it. So, like, I can see things in here. For example, I can see Hong Kong right there. The, uh, the kanji word for Hong Kong is the same. But in Cantonese, this would be Hong Kong. Hong Kong. It's not going to be Hong Kong in, in Japanese. So I'm going to change back to Hiragana. And it will tell me where's Hong Kong gone. Okay. Oh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the Japanese for Hong Kong. So it turns out that the uh, Japanese pronunciation for Hong Kong is based on the English name Hong Kong, not on the uh, Cantonese. So yeah, I just wanted to share this with you because, you know, I'm sure that a lot of people learning Japanese uh, will also like anime or they will like things like Pokemon. And yeah, I think that this is, uh, this could be useful for you. I don't know if Pokemon have the same language options. Let me just have a quick look. I do play Pokemon Go. Let me have a look in here. This is not supposed to be a Pokemon Go stream. If you want to see my Pokemon Go streams, go to uh, anthonykelly.live, click on the YouTube link, and go to my YouTube channel, because that's where I do Pokemon Go things. Okay, hold on a second. And I'm just going to check if there's any... I don't think there's any language settings in here. We might have to change the whole tablet to, uh, to Japanese in order to change Pokemon to Japanese. Let me just have a look. Okay. No, it seems that there's... Oh, advanced settings. Is language in here? No. It seems that there... I, I'm not crying about this or anything. That it isn't easy to change Pokemon Go to Japanese without changing your whole phone to Japanese. And uh, I don't think I'm ready to do that just yet. Um, but... I wouldn't mind using Pokemon Home in Japanese. You can see here in my uh, Pokedex here that I haven't used this very much at all. So yeah, I'm going to leave this in Hiragana and Katakana just to force me to, uh, to practice my Hiragana and Katakana a little bit more. Uh, what time is it right now? I've been here for nearly an hour. Should we do one more run of Duolingo? I did say this is going to be a Duolingo stream, right? Okay, hopefully they'll introduce some new characters to us. Okay. Mm. Here are four additional characters. A ratte. Oh, ratte is a kind of hot drink. Ratte. Ratte. I think it's a latte, right? Ratte. So we have te, like tepid, ha, like, I'm English, hot, <laughs> like the American pronunciation of hot, uh, so, like soap, and ma, like mock. There is a limitation to using words in your own language to remember words in another language. Um, imagine all of those English words in standard North American English. Okay, we're going to start. Okay, this first one was ma. Oh, I, I, I turned the volume down because Pokemon was too noisy. Ma. ma. Okay. Um, when Duolingo introduces new characters to you for the first time, 
it will allow you to trace them. And I wish it did this more. I think it's quite nice to uh, try to remember how to actually write the words. So we have ma. And it doesn't matter how you write it, it always comes up useful. Like if your finger is shaking or if you go a little bit too far, it, Duolingo will ignore it. So this is ma. 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 We know that one. So. So. This is the one that looks a little bit like mm. And I'm wondering, so this first line is going, is going down. I'm wondering, is that other line going to go down as well? Or is it going to come back up? I'm guessing that it's down and up. I hope it is. Because that would be similar to um, she as well, which is down and up. But we'll find out. No. <laughs> down and down. Okay, this is so. 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 So forget everything that I just said. Ri, o, so, and ra. Uh, so. So. Ri, uh. o, da, so. So. Okay, you're getting good at this. Are we though? Ma. Are we really? Ma, I heard that. Ma. Ma. So here we have i, u, ma, and o. To me, that still sounds like gu. 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 Ma. What was it again? Was it ma? Ma. Yeah. Okay. Ha. Ha. Down and down. Ha. 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 This is a bit confusing for me because ha looks like the Chinese character for the number eight. Um, I th it should be the same in kanji as well. Ha. So, okay, we have ra, da, yu, yu, ri, ri, and so, so, so. Okay. Okay, remember those two that I mix up? This one is going across the top and then down, although with my stroke order it might be up or down. It's just how I'm remembering it. So this one should be zu, zu, e. I remember this in a weird way. Um, it looks a little bit like the Chinese word for work, for doing work. And I think about engineer, so I remember e. And that might sound like jumping through hoops and like finding a really long way around to getting to the word. Um, you don't think about that. That was just the way that I learned it the first time and it was in the back of my head. And now whenever I see e, I somehow think of engineer and I recognize it as being eh. So, zu, zu, eh. eh. Is this m? Mm? Or is it so? I think it's m, mm, right? Mm. Yeah. Ha. ha. Looks like a Chinese eight. Outstanding, 10 in a row. It's more than that. We got all the answers right last time. Ha. Ha. Ki. Ko. And two. Ha. Ki. Ko. Tsu. Ha. Ha. Now, I don't know if I'm getting good at Japanese, um, but I'm getting good at Duolingo. Tet. Tet. Okay. We're going to trace the letters again. Tet. I'm guessing this time that we're going to go across, across, and then down. That's my guess. Tet. And I remember this because it looks a little bit like a T. Across, across, and down, right? Te. 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 Okay, we have ma, u, ka, and i. Ma, u. <laughs> it still sounds like gu. Ka. Ka. So, okay, we have u, so, m, that looks almost the same. You know what, when you see them side by side, 
it's easy, right? Um, but if I saw one of those two words, or if someone wrote it and the line was a little bit wrong, I don't know if I'd get it right. Mm. Uh, so. so. Mm. Mm. And she. She. So. What was it? Was it so? So. Yeah. Okay. We have ma. Ma. A. A. You. You. Te. Te. Okay. Date. Date. That's the one that we just learned. Do you remember what it was? Date. Rate. Ra. Te. A latte. Rate. I quite like tea lattes. Do you have those where you are? Um, in Hong Kong, in Starbucks, you can get like an English breakfast tea latte. Uh, and they also have some like, like Japanese green tea lattes as well. Um, the English tea latte is quite nice. And there's a chai tea latte too. Um, wa, wa, mi, mi, te, te, chi, chi. I can't even remember what they said. Te. Te. Okay, we're doing well. Okay, just looking at the left. Ha. ha. Ma. Ma. U. U. So. So. Te. Te. You can see I'm a little bit slower with so. Right? I, I, it takes me just a second longer to, to recognize which one it is. Okay, te. So. So. Ma. Ha. Ma. It also takes me a second to uh, like differentiate between u and wa because the only difference is that little line at the top. Great work. Let's make this more challenging. Okay. I'm going to sit up straight because it's going to be more challenging. Let's get some uh, caffeine in me first. Coca-Cola Plus, the healthy Coke. Okay. Okay. I know this first one. Zu. So. Mm. Oh. This one is so, I'm sure. Ha. What was that? Ha. Sometimes the sound on Duolingo isn't great. Like, you can hear... Uh, sometimes the sound is a little bit broken. And I'm not sure if it's compression on the sound or if they've clipped it a little bit too short, but it can sometimes be difficult to hear what they're saying. Oh, I, I, I hope that the sound on this stream is good right now. <laughs> it would be bad if I was uh, blaming Duolingo for having terrible sound and you couldn't hear what I was saying. Ha, ha right? We also have ta, you, and ki. Oh, there's no sound. There's no point in going through them. Oh, you just missed that. At the bottom, there's a little thing that says can't listen now. So if you're in an environment, maybe you're, you know, uh, commuting to work and you don't have your headphones in and they give you a challenge like this where it wants you to listen to the word and to choose the right answer, you can press the button that says can't listen now and it will skip all of those questions. So it will just go to the, um, the questions that require you to look at the screen and not to... Uh, um, not to listen to it. Okay. Ha, te, ko, so, ma. Ha, te, ko, so, and ma. Hawaii. What was that? Hawaii. 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 Do you think that is? Hawaii. <laughs> it sounded like it. Ha, wa, i. Hawaii. It is. It's Hawaii. That's amazing. Okay. I suddenly think my Japanese is good. Hawaii in Japanese is Hawaii. And we still haven't hit our daily goal. What time is it right now? 
we could keep going. Not with the um, katakana, because that's going to get boring. Um, but I think it would be nice. Hold on a second. Is anybody new following me? No, I don't think so. Um, I think it would be nice to do the main exercises in Duolingo a little bit, because I haven't done these in a long time. Um, let's have a look at intro, because I don't know what that is. I can't remember what that is. I, I did a lot of these exercises two or three years ago. I'm still crying. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> We've got kanji. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, I can guess the first one. So the first one has a kanji character followed by e. e. And I think that's going to be e. Yeah, it is. And you could see that those are kanji e as the last character of the hiragana word. So I'll, I'll just tell you what's going on here. Um, they've got a bunch of kanji on the left and the hiragana pronunciation on the right. Um, I can't remember the kanji, so I'm going to look at the hiragana first and see if that helps. Okay, the first one is Tanaka. It sounds like a name. Tanaka. Could that be a surname? Um, Hon. And then we have Honda. Honda. Is that the car? And then we have Shushin. Shushin. Uh, I think that Shushin is where you are born. Um, hold on a second. Sorry, this is the longest Duolingo stream I've ever done, so I'm losing my voice. Shushin. I think it's going to be this one. Shushin. 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 Okay. Uh, hon should be this one. Hon. Hon. Okay. One of these is going to be Tanaka. The other one is going to be Honda. I think Honda. Yeah, it's got Hon in it, right? Honda. This is Honda. Honda. This is the first. Yeah, that's Honda. So this word above it, Hon, uh, you can't quite see it. The, the second one down on the left-hand column, Hon is uh, the character in Nihon, which is Japan. Nihongo, Japanese. Uh, it's the second character of Japan. So this one must be Tanaka. Tanaka? Which I think is a name. Okay, okay. We're learning real Japanese now. I haven't done this in ages. Okay. Hajimemashite. 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 Tanaka desu. Tanaka desu. Okay. So, hajimemashite. Should be nice to meet you. If you don't know, hajimemashite. You can, t you can tap. When, when you see a word for the first time in a while, uh, Duolingo will underline the word and you can tap on it and it will give you the translation. So, hajimemashite is nice to meet you. And then we have Tanaka desu. Tanaka desu. Okay, so Tanaka was that name that we just learned in the first section. Des, desu, des is the verb to be, to be somebody, and or to be something. So Tanaka des would be I am Tanaka, right? Tanaka be, <laughs> right? Tanaka des. And yeah, th this is where the grammatical structure of Japanese is quite different from uh, from English for me. Um, but at this point, Tanaka des. It's not that hard at this point. Like Anthony des, maybe? Anthony des? Is there a Japanese pronunciation for Anthony? Anthony des. Okay. Hajimemashite. Anthony des. So that should be, let's have a look at the bottom. Nice to meet you. No full stop. I'm Tanaka. 
Yay, we're good. Okay, so you'll see here at the bottom right, there's a little flag. That's if you're going to report something as being wrong. Like maybe the word oo sounds like goo. You might want to hit that button. And then there's a little speech bubble. And this speech bubble loads up a forum of sorts where people talk about stuff. Hello, I'm Tanaka, somebody wrote. Hello, Tanaka-san. I thought Tanaka's a town. So I put, I'm from Tanaka, haha. -ha. Um, so if you don't understand something, confused about this sentence, see if these comments from fellow learners will help. Sometimes they might. So if you're having a problem with something and you don't know what's going on, you know, jump into the comments. Jump into my comments. I've got comments right here. Um, you can leave a comment anytime. Unless it's not working again and... Uh, then, sorry, if the comments are not working, if you've been writing down here and I haven't been answering, I'm really sorry. I'm new to all this. Okay, matching pairs. Oh, goodness me. It's kanji and hiragana again. Okay, remember the first one. E, e, e. 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 Is that like e, yeah? Which means no, right? Okay, um, we can see the word hon here that we learned before, but there's another word in front of it. I'm, I'm looking at the left-hand column, second word. This is Nihon, Japan. Nihon. Oh, Nihon. 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 Okay. The next one, is that Tanaka again? Or, no, that, the Honda, not Tanaka. The next one is Honda. Nihon no Hon. Honda. Honda? Honda. Hon. Hon. Okay. Look at this bottom one. Uh, we have a kanji word at the end, but we've got some katakana at the beginning. And the katakana reads, America. Which we, we know what that means. And then we've got this character at the end, which is uh, Jin. Jin. Now, sometimes in Japanese, one kanji word can have more than one pronunciation, and that's something that we're going to be looking out for. But here we have America Jin. America Jin. America Jin, which is an American. Uh, we learned earlier that the United Kingdom is Ikirisu. Right? Right? Was that right? Ikirisu? Um, so if I am British, I guess I would say. Ikirisu jin des. I am British. America jin des. Ikirisu jin des. Hajimemashite, Honda des. Ah, I'm going to listen to that first. Hajimemashite, Honda des. Hajimemashite, which sounds like nice to meet you from before. So I don't think we need to click that this time. Honda jin des. Honda. No, Honda Jin Des. <laughs> Honda Jin Des means I'm a Honda person. No, no, no. Honda Des. Hajimemashite, Honda Des. Hajimemashite, Honda Des. Nice to meet you. Where's nice? Nice to meet you. I'm Honda. I'm wondering whether I should start my live streams with Hajimemashite. Anthony Des. <laughs> it sounds really pretentious for me to start my Japanese live stream speaking Japanese. Miss Tanaka is Japanese. Type the Japanese translation. Okay. Oh, goodness. It's given me the keyboard. I can try to do this. This is going to be difficult. So there's two ways of doing this. The one way is that they give you multiple choice. And you can just tap the characters and you're done. The second way is that you can use whatever built-in keyboard you've got and do it that way. And that sounds like a challenge. Okay. Ms. Tanaka is Japanese. Now, they say Ms. Tanaka. I thought that Ms. and Mr. were the same word in Japanese. I thought that it would be Tanaka-san. For a man or for a woman. Am I wrong here? 
Let's see what happens. Okay. Tanaka. Okay. Ta. Na. Ka. Okay. You can see right there. So I've typed in Tanaka and it has given me the kanji. And it has suggested that my next word should be san. And that's what I'm going to put, even though I'm not sure whether males and female, like whether men and women are both referred to as san. That's what I'm going to put. Tanaka-san. Nihonjin desu. Tanaka-san. Nihonjin desu. Miss Tanaka. Japanese is. Let's have a look. Uh, Tanaka-san. Ni. Where's ni? Na ni. Ni hon. Ni. Ah, oh, I could do that. Hold on. Uh, ni hon. Where's hon? Ha 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 ha. He who he ho. Ni hon. Hmm? Ni hon. Good. Jin. Jin is she, but with a duck ten. Right? Sa. Shi. Ji. Nihon jin. Yeah, here we go. Got it right there. Nihon jin des. Uh, ta. Ti. Tu. Te. Te. We need a duck ten. Okay. Uh, do you know what's going on with the duck ten? So, this word here is te, like a T sound, te. And if we add these two little lines onto the side, the duck ten, it changes it changes the sound from te to te. Okay, forgive my pronunciation, but it changes from more of a T sound to more of a D sound. Desu. Sa, 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 si, 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 so. Sa, si, su. Sa, si, su. Des. Okay. I'm hoping we've got this right. This will be the first time I have ever written a full sentence in Japanese using a Japanese keyboard. So let's hope that we are right. <clears throat> Tanaka-san, Nihonjin des. No! What's wrong? Wow. Tanaka-san wa nihonjin desu. There is this uh, particle at the end of the subject, wa, which tells you that this is the subject of the sentence. <laughs> that I completely forgot. I, If anyone watching this knows Japanese, they were probably screaming before I did this. <laughs> okay. Tanaka-san wa. Nihonjin des. Are they going to talk about that in the chat? Why is the wa necessary? I mean, the subject is quite obvious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what someone wrote. No, 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 no. This isn't my language. This is Japanese. If, if the Japanese say that wa is necessary, then it's necessary. Uh, Tanaka-san wa. So san was right. Saying uh, san for a man or a woman was fine. It was just that I forgot to say what afterward. Mario to Ooh. Mario to I need to redo all of these these lessons. Mario to Mario. Like super? Mario. Mario. Mario to Mario to I think to as a particle means also. Mario to imas. Mario to imasu. Masu. What does that mean? Mario to imas. <laughs> I should know that. I told you at the beginning that I am a beginner in Japanese. So, please forgive me. 
But why is it top and not what? Hmm. Mario to. Yimas. Mario to yimas. Mario to yimas. Let's see what the chat says. My name is Mario. Mario to yimas. <laughs> nah, it's a me, Mario. That should be. <laughs> it's a me. Does anyone ask why it is to? Okay. Okay, so uh, someone wrote Mario to yimas. I'm called Mario. So e is something like say. Yeah, the 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 Chinese character is also talking about speech. Uh, I remember the word name. Was it some? There's another word for name. Um, I'm sure there's another way of saying my name is Anthony or Mario. Mr. Honda is a teacher. I shouldn't have jumped into uh, these exercises. Is there any way of like cancelling all of my previous progress and starting again? Mr. Honda. So Honda, we can do that. No, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the uh, the options. This is gonna be a little bit. I don't. I'm not confident with this sentence. Okay then, Mr. Honda. Honda is this one. Honda. Hon Honda. They put a Tanaka in there just to uh, just to catch us out. Honda. Mr. Honda. Honda san. San. Wa. wa. Honda san wa. Sin-san. Sensei. 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 Des. Des. I'm confident here. Okay. Honda-san wa sensei des. Honda-san wa sensei des. We're right. Mr. Honda is a teacher. Anthony-san wa. Oh, watashi wa. Or I, I think that when you're talking about yourself, you don't even need to say I because I as a subject is a given. Um, so I could say, is it gakusei? I think gakusei is student. Gakusei desu. Uh, watashi wa gakusei desu. Maybe. It's there in uh, Mina no Nihongo, the book that I studied part of and obviously didn't commit to memory. Okay. Tanaka-san, ma, Honda-san wa sensei desu. Honda-san wa sensei desu. That's what we just said. Honda-san wa sensei desu. Hon I, I can't type this in uh, using my keyboard now. It's a bit inconsistent. Okay. Honda. Honda-san. Wow. And this is a little bit confusing because the kanji character for sensei um, in Cantonese, in Chinese, is sinsang. Sinsang can be mister as well as teacher. Um, so when I see sinsang, I, I, it's a little bit confusing to me. Okay. Honda-san wa. Sensei des. Sensei des. Right? Okay. Nice to meet you. My name is Tanaka. Nice to meet you. Hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. Uh, my name is Tanaka. Okay, I'm going to do Hajime mashite first. Let's get that out of the way. Hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. Hajimemashite. My name is Tanaka. We're going to put Tanaka first. Tanaka. Na Honda. Tanaka. Tanaka. They didn't say Tanaka-san. They just said Tanaka. Can I just say Tanaka des? Is des in here? No, it was that word, right? Tanaka to. to. I, I mas. Mas. 
Is that right? Tanaka to imas. Mario to imas. Let's try it. Yay! Excuse me, I can say my name is Tanaka in Japanese. Okay. Hajime mashite. Anthony to imas. Hajime mashite. Anthony to imas. Or I could just say Anthony does. Hajime mashite. Honda to imas. Honda to imas. Hajime mashite. Honda to imas. And this is where turtle speak comes in really useful. Hajime mashite. Honda to imas. Hajime mashite. Where are you? Hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. Honda. So hon is like Nihon. Hon. Honda. To. To. Pardon? Was it Honda to imas? Hajime mashite. Honda to imas. Honda to i i i masu. Now, I'm quite confident in this answer right now. I would be surprised if it was wrong. But you've got to remember that Duolingo keeps presenting me with similar sentences right now. So I'm likely to remember it. If I suddenly met a Japanese person on the street, firstly, I wouldn't run up to them and try to speak Japanese because that would be weird. Um, but let's say I were in Japan and I had been introduced to somebody. I would probably remember Hajime Mashite if I'd been studying for a while, but I might not remember at that moment exactly what to say. Um, forget Japanese. If I'm surprised by something in English, I might not remember exactly what to say. So this is still going to take practice, right? Hajime mashite. Honda to imas. Yay! Cool. Five in a row. Tanaka san wa nihon jin desu. Tanaka san wa nihon jin desu. I haven't even looked at it. Tanaka san, Mr. or Ms. Tanaka. Say that again. Tanaka san wa nihon jin desu. Tanaka san wa. Mr. or Ms. Tanaka is Japanese. Oh, we've got to write this in English. Hold on. Okay. Uh, let's say Ms. Tanaka because that's what they did before. Ms. Tanaka is, I'm going to assume that it's the same person, Japanese. <laughs> I type Japanese and then Japanese food is appearing as a uh, recommended emoji. Okay, I'm saying Ms. Tanaka is Japanese. Yay! Okay, select the missing word. Hajime mashite. Do 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 des. How do I know? It could be anything. It could be Anthony des. Igirisu jin desu, America jin desu, Tanaka desu. Okay, <laughs> Nihon, Nihon is Japan. <laughs> nice to meet you. I am Japan. Uh, China, I, I don't know how to say China in Japanese. Was it Chugoku? Chugoku? Something like that. Um, I am China. Or the last one uh, is Tanaka. Tanaka. Hajime mashite. Tanaka desu. Honda san wa nihon jin desu. Honda san wa nihon jin desu. Okay, so we can, we can learn this kind of structure. Somebody wa something desu. Right? Uh, Mario wa. Mario san wa uh, nihon jin desu. Mario-san wa America jin desu. Right? So somebody wa something desu. If you say somebody is something. Honda-san wa Nihon jin desu. So Honda-san, Mr. Honda, 
Honda san, right? Daniel san, Anthony san. What is the particle to say that it's a person? Nihon jin, Japanese, des. Honda, right? Uh, we'll say Mr. Honda this time. Mr. Honda is Japanese. Two thumbs up. Okay, then, select the missing word. Uh, Tanaka-san. Mr. or Ms. Tanaka. Something Nihonjin des. And that's what we were just talking about before. Like, uh, Mario wa something something des. Somebody wa something des. So here we have Tanaka-san wa. Oh, which one of these words is wa? We have uh, <laughs> pa, ho, ha, and ba. If you look at this, you would think to yourself, as an absolute beginner, none of these words say wa. None of them. But it's this one. Ha, when used as a particle on the subject of a sentence, is wa. See, I did learn something from that book. Ms. Tanaka is Japanese. She's a woman. Tanaka-san wa nihonjin desu. Okay. Great work. Let's make this a bit... It's already too hard. Okay. Nice to meet you. <coughs> My name is Honda. Nice to meet you. Hajime mashite. My name is Honda. Honda to imasu. Right? Hajime mashite. Honda to imasu. Hajime mashite. Should we type this by ourselves? I mean, it says it's hard. Okay. Hajime mashite. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, chi. Oh, is that she? She with a duck ten. Hajime. Where's ma? Ma, mi, mu, me. Hajime mashite. Oh, this is going to be wrong, isn't it? Hajime mashite. Ta, ti, tu, te. I wrote it wrong, didn't I? Hajime. No, it's Hajime Mashite, right? Hajime. Hajime Ma. Shite. Hajime Mashite. Okay. Good start. I think that's right. My name is Honda. You want to become famous by followers and prime viewers? No, I don't. Sorry, S. Smurf. I don't. I'm actually really happy. Um, I know I'm talking to a spam bot right now. I'm really happy that I've only got one viewer and that it's a real viewer. If I were famous, this would be really embarrassing. Okay. My name is is Honda. Honda, where are you? Ha, he, hu, he, hon, da. Honda. To, 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 ta, ti, tu, te, to. Honda, to, i, i, ma, su. A, i, i, i. Honda to i i ma sa si su. Okay, I think I've got this right. Um, hajime mashite. Honda to imas. I think I've got it right. Whoa! I mean, I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, Miss Tanaka is Japanese. Okay, we're on a roll here. Let's try this. Tanaka-san. Can we do this faster? Ta-na-ka. 
Tanaka-san. Tanaka-san. Okay. Tanaka-san is Japanese. Tanaka-san wa. But it's really a ha. Tanaka-san wa. A Nihonjin des. Nani. Ha hi hu he hon. Nihon jin. We can say shi with a duck ten. Shin. Nihon jin desu. Da ta ti tu. Tu. Duck ten. Oh, what's going to happen? Desu. Ta ti tu. Te. De. Te. Su. Can I get rid of that comment up there? Sasi su. Desu. Okay. I can't type in Japanese, but I'll try it in Latin anyways. Thank you, Jurandi. By the way, thank you for uh, following this stream. You can try. You can write it in, like, Romaji. Like, you can write the characters in Romaji, right? So you can write them out. I think on this keyboard, let me have a look. Is there a way of typing? I don't know if there is a way of typing on a Japanese keyboard with Romaji characters. There should be. There should be a way. Um, my problem is when I go into the settings, let's have a look. Preferences. Have we got Japanese settings on here? Are you using iPhone or Android? Because it's probably going to be different there anyway. Um, let me just have a look. See, I can't. Languages, Japanese. Okay, I can have a QWERTY keyboard. Okay, there is a QWERTY keyboard here. Is that going to let me... Oh, there's a handwriting keyboard. You're using Xbox? Serious? Do you mean you're watching me on Xbox right now? <laughs> um, Xbox isn't that popular in Japan, so I don't know whether or not you'd be able to uh, type Japanese on an Xbox. I hope you can. Wait, if you're watching me on Xbox, does that mean that I'm on, like, a big, like, 50-inch or 16-inch screen right now? Because my head's going to be huge. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, I've changed this to a QWERTY keyboard. Typing on an Xbox. Have you got a keyboard plugged into that? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, by the way. I'm going to see whether I can type. Okay, now I've got a Latin keyboard. Nihon? No, it's not giving me Japanese. Okay, you have a go at that. See whether you can get Japanese running on the Xbox. I always use the QWERTY keyboard on mobile. Yeah, um, I think... I can't figure out how to do this. Okay, Nihon got QWERTY. Wait, there's a, there's a Samsung keyboard here as well. Like, this is a Samsung tablet. Nihon got Samsung keyboard. Okay, it's a floating keyboard. If I change this... Can you tell that I don't know what I'm doing? No, I don't want to use... Okay, okay, fine. Record audio. Fine. How do I type on the Samsung keyboard? Okay, Hong Kong keyboard. US keyboard. Japanese keyboard. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay. Download the languages you're using on your previous Galaxy. This is my first Galaxy. My, my, my phone is a Google Pixel. Okay. Oh, I like this. Hold on a second. We've got these Japanese emoji in here. Sorry, I'll, I'll try not to get off topic. Back to QWERTY. Ni. It's not even typing. I've got to figure this out. Hold on a second. No, we're not going to do this right now. I'm going to get back to my Google keyboard, because at least I know it works. And I'm going to do it like this for now. Um, okay. Tanaka-san wa nihonjin desu. I think that's right.
Hooray! Okay then, we are definitely doing well here. That was much harder than I thought it would be. I'm just... One thing that you can do if you're... Oh, okay. Konnichiwa. Yoroshiku. O genki desu ka, Antoni-san. Your Japanese is better than mine. Konnichiwa is good afternoon, right? Uh, it is afternoon here. Are you in a... Where are you right now? Are you... Uh, in a place where it is afternoon. Uh, ah, people will say, I remember it was Tomo Yoroshiku Onikaishimasu, maybe? Konbanwa is good evening. And good morning would be uh, 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 Ohayo gozaimasu, right? Oh, konnichiwa. Isn't Konnichiwa good afternoon as well, though? I might be confused by that. I thought that Ohio was good morning, and wasn't konnichiwa for afternoon? Maybe? So where are you based anyway, Jirandi? Is it morning, afternoon, or evening where you are? Uh, konnichiwa yoroshiku. O genki desu ka? O genki desu ka is like, how are you, isn't it? Okenki desu ka? I've got to learn this. Again, I think all of this is in the book, but I haven't paid much attention to it. Um, I had Japanese lessons. I had a couple of Japanese lessons. Um, a couple. I, I, I had a few lessons last year, and uh, my Japanese tutor went back to Japan uh, just when this whole coronavirus thing hit and she hasn't come back uh, okay oh oranda oranda des watashi wa oranda des what is oranda hmm. watashi wa i am oranda des you are oranda what is oranda I'm going to try typing that in to Google Translate. <laughs> Hold on, let's get my Japanese keyboard back. Okay. Okay, watashi wa oranda desu. A, I, U, E, O, ran, oranda, yota, dakten. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oranda. Watashi wa oranda jin desu. Do you mean that you're from the Netherlands? Is that right? Are you from the Netherlands? Oranda jin desu. Is that right? Oranda. Oranda. So I think if, if if I'm right, if you're saying that you're from the Netherlands, yeah, you need the jin right there. Oranda jin des. Um, wait, what time is it in the Netherlands? It's the middle of the night. You shouldn't be up, right? <laughs> Isn't it the middle of the night right now? Like it's. Hey Google, what time is it in the Netherlands? Oh. It's 2.20 p.m. No, in the Netherlands, not in Hong Kong. 7 a.m. Have you been up since like 6 o'clock in the morning? That is way too early to be learning Japanese. Um, I have... Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have something... <laughs> It's really, really early. Thank you for joining me first thing in the morning. I have a confession to make. Uh, I never learned Dutch. And my grandmother is from the Netherlands. My father's mother is from the Netherlands. And I don't want to waste time sleeping. Well, I hope you're not wasting time watching me try to learn Japanese. Um, yeah, my oma is from the Netherlands, and I never learned Dutch properly. 
Um, she used to, when when we were really young, when like when I was a toddler, um, she would sing to us in Dutch, and we would uh, you know, we would learn A B C D, uh, A N T W E D R I, you know, those like uh, very very basic kids Dutch. But I didn't see my nan all the time. Uh, I used to, um, my father, because my Dutch grandmother moved to the UK, and uh, sorry, my Dutch grandmother moved to the UK, and I think that she didn't speak Dutch very much to her children uh, because they were growing up in England. And every time I met my grandmother, we spoke English. We didn't speak Dutch, but I heard. Dutch growing up, um, my father has cousins in the Netherlands who we see semi regularly, and I can understand a little bit of Dutch, but yeah, I'm a little bit ashamed to say that my Dutch is really bad, and I tried to learn when I was a teenager, um, and I just couldn't. I just couldn't. Um, the books were a little bit too boring for me. Uh, the lessons were a little bit too difficult for me, and I just failed. Why don't I learn it now? Um, my grandmother unfortunately passed away last year, and I, that that's that's not an excuse for not learning it. Uh, Dutch is the closest language to English; it shouldn't be hard. Maybe that was why I found it hard. I don't know, uh, but. I feel like if I were to learn Dutch, I should have done it a long time ago. Thank you, thank you so much for, uh, for your condolences. Yeah, I I feel like it's a little bit late for me to learn Dutch, and the worst part is that all of my Dutch relatives speak really good English. So every time they would come to to England. They were super keen to to speak to us in English, and yeah, there was there was a lot of English spoken. <laughs> Better late than never. Maybe, maybe. Um, once I get Japanese down, um, it would be nice to to at least be able to speak some basic Dutch. I have never been. Hey, thanks for following me, Jerandy. Um, I haven't even been to the Netherlands. My sister has, my elder sister. My parents used to go there a lot more when they first got married.、Um, I think I have only been like through the airport in transit coming to Hong Kong,、um, but I've never even been to the Netherlands. Right now, with you know the coronavirus pandemic and everything, there is not much chance to travel, and. Now that Britain has decided that they、uh, they want to Brexit,、um, I no longer have the right to live and work in the Netherlands either. So, a lot of the opportunities are, you know, there's there's less opportunity to、uh, to travel to the Netherlands right now. But my wife and I have both said that、uh, the next time we we spend an, a significant amount of time in the UK, we definitely want to go to the Netherlands because. It would be new for my wife, and it would be new for me as well. I've、um, there's there's something that I want to experience there. You know, I I have relatives there, and I would very much like to go. For now,、uh, I'm living in Hong Kong.、Uh, you you can't really see Hong Kong. It was very bright outside, so I、uh, I closed the curtains today.、Uh, I'm living in Hong Kong, and I did learn Cantonese when coming to Hong Kong. Uh, we do like to travel to Japan, so I would like to improve my Japanese. So, Dutch is on the list. Dutch is definitely on the list of languages that I would like to learn.、Uh, I- I'll learn a little bit. I'm I'm pretty sure that、uh, Duolingo has got Dutch in there as well. I might have tried a while back. Let me have a look here. Look, there you go. Dutch is on the list of languages that I've tried. Hong Kong speaks a different kind of Chinese, right?、Um, yeah, so there's different dialects of Chinese.、Um, the Chinese that, if someone says that they speak Chinese, normally they're talking about Mandarin,、um, which is called Putonghua in in Chinese. 
and Mandarin is the official language spoken in mainland China, um, and it's also um, spoken in Taiwan as well. And you know, if you if you speak to Chinese people around the world, like if you go to Malaysia or Singapore, you're probably going to use Mandarin to get by.、Um, but in the province closest to Hong Kong, which is Guangdong Province, and in Hong Kong and in Macau, the main language spoken is Cantonese.、Um, now these days, I haven't been to mainland China for a couple of years,、um, but. These days, even in mainland China, everybody speaks Mandarin.、Uh, they can speak Cantonese, but they speak Mandarin. But in Hong Kong, you know, for your for your daily life,、uh, you would be speaking Cantonese.、Um, the written language is a little bit different as well. So the written language in Hong Kong and Macau、uh, is using traditional Chinese characters.、Um, But the characters that they use in the mainland have been simplified, so there's a lot less strokes、uh, in the words. And when learning Japanese, it's quite funny because kanji characters are based on Chinese, and some of the kanji characters look more like traditional Chinese characters, and some of them look more like simplified Chinese characters. So, you know, living in Hong Kong and being able to speak. Uh, Chinese、uh, is helping somewhat with learning Cantonese. Are you much afraid of the Chinese gaining too much government power over the island of Hong Kong? Press freedom and democracy able to be taken away from you? I'm afraid enough that I wouldn't talk about it on a live stream.、Um, I don't know. Hong Kong has has changed a lot in in the last few years, and you know different people will. Blame different groups for that,、um, but it is changing, and the mood in Hong Kong has changed a lot as well, and that does leave me kind of missing the way it was a few years ago because you know things have changed quite a lot, and I will think about kind of like where would I want to spend the next twenty years, right? Because right now I'm. Living and working here in Hong Kong, and my home is here.、Uh, my immediate family is here, and my work is here. And you know, I don't know if I were to to leave Hong Kong. I, I'm not sure where I would go. <laughs>、uh, right? I I think if I were to leave Hong Kong, where would I go? My Japanese isn't good enough to go there. Um, if I went to Taiwan, would they eventually have a similar situation to the one in Hong Kong? I don't know. Could I go back to the UK, the Netherlands? That's where I should be, right? Is everything still good in in Holland? The Netherlands is great, right? Yeah.、Uh, so, honestly, the the situation and the mood. In Hong Kong has changed,、um, and it doesn't feel. Yeah, you can go to the Netherlands. Everyone speaks English, but as a bonus, I would probably learn Dutch. As I said, though, this is a.、Uh, we have the happiest kids on earth and the tallest kids as well, right? <laughs> yeah,、uh, I. I don't have any firsthand experience of the Netherlands. My my cousins, which is really like my father's cousins' kids,、um, they're raising their family in the Netherlands, and they seem to be happy. I I hope they are happy. Yeah, maybe the Netherlands would be a nice place to go. You're fourteen and five foot, as a five foot eight. Wow, what's that in centimeters? It's tall enough for a fourteen year old. And the worst thing, and I don't know whether it's any of that、um, Dutch DNA. Wait, that's why you're up in. That's if you're fourteen. Is that why you're up at six a.m. on the Xbox?、Um, I yeah, I don't know if it's my Dutch DNA. I was still growing until I was about twenty, right? I I kept growing. I think I stopped when I was about sixteen. 
Um, and then between 18 and 20, I grew maybe four more centimeters. So I'm about 180, 181, 182 right now. I really just want to get a PC. I don't have the money yet. Um, but an Xbox is quite a PC-like machine anyway. But it would be nice to uh, to have a good PC, right? My, my kid has built himself a, uh, a gaming PC. Uh, it would cost, PCs are expensive. I mean, they're fun and it's it's good to either buy one or build one. Um, my kid has built himself a Ryzen 7, I think. Um, I'm not sure if you're into like uh, PC hardware or anything. He's got himself a Ryzen 7 from last year, the Ryzen 3000. And it's got an RTX 2060 Super in it for the graphics card. So it plays just about anything, but that's going to cost you, right? It's, um, building PCs can be expensive. The only reason I can uh, be online right now is that he's at school. And uh, welcome to Tech Talk, yeah. Um, <laughs> the only reason that I'm on right now is that he's at school and I can steal his PC. Uh, that's why I'm on this early. If uh, if I wanted to get online in the evening, it would be a little bit more difficult with everybody at home. But you've got, is that an Xbox One that you've got for now? Um, I mean, I've been looking at the, X, it's not the Xbox Series X, is it? Because that's really hard to get right now. Uh, we've been thinking about getting a PS5, um, but they are impossible to get right now uh, in Hong Kong. So when they first dropped, it was, I think it was probably just bots buying up all of the PS5 stock and nobody's been able to get one. I don't know anyone who's got one. Uh, my boy's classmate, one of his classmates managed to get a PS5. Um, we have put our names down for the lucky draw, uh, which isn't a lucky draw for winning a PS5. It's a lucky draw for the opportunity to be able to buy a PS5. Uh, if and when one <laughs> becomes available. So, uh, yeah, we we don't have a PS5. I'd rather get a PC than a Series X because the Series X and S games are also on the One and they're also on PC too. I mean, I know a PC is a lot more flexible. Um, but for us, the reason that we wouldn't really consider getting a Series X or a Series S is that we've got a PC. Right, and um, I don't think there is anything that we could play on an Xbox that we couldn't play on the series. Uh, I don't think there's anything that we could play on the Xbox Series X that we couldn't already get on PC. Um, so we would like to get a PS5 because we never had a PS4 uh, and there's a lot of games from that generation that might be nice to get. Uh, so yeah, I think if we can get a PS5, we might. Um, but yeah, having a having a PC is is uh, is quite good. What do you play most on on your Xbox, or are you just watching people stream Duolingo all day? I mean, on on PC, I don't play that much on PC. Um, if I do play, I play a lot on the Nintendo Switch. You play? Do you play all day? Um, we have a Nintendo Switch, and I have put an inordinate amount of time into Fortnite and into Splatoon on the Nintendo Switch. I played Splatoon a lot back in the day. Um, I stopped playing that about a year or so ago, and then I started playing Fortnite, and I played Fortnite until last month. And I've started to get a little bit bored with Fortnite. Um, it's it's fun. It's a good game. And the content in it is great. But I think I've just kind of burnt out on it. And I'm not really that interested anymore. Uh, then I started doing my live streaming videos. And putting videos on YouTube um, last month. And I've been spending a lot of time doing this. So I haven't been playing that many games. I am planning to get back into Splatoon, though, uh, because it's really good. 
But anyway, um, I hope you can save up a little bit of money to get yourself a PC. The good thing about PCs is that you can always leave it a little bit longer because there is always something better coming along. Like um, now they've got the um, the RTX 3000 series graphics cards and they're hard to get right now. So even if you did have the money to buy a PC, like the, the spare money available, you might not be able to get the uh, the best one that you would want right now. But, you know, a few months down the line, there will be... Uh, you know, there'll be new hardware available. You have all these emotes. Are those emotes on? Now, I'm not sure if you're watching on Twitch right now or YouTube. Are those Twitch emotes? Uh, because we're streaming to YouTube and to Twitch right now. Um, which, if I were a Twitch affiliate, if I had a few more, uh, if I had a few more uh, followers on uh, Twitch, they might force you to only. Uh, only use one platform for live streams. Oh my goodness, how many emotes have you got? Is that it? Have you got any more? <laughs> it's too many. Are we done with the emotes now? Is that all of them? I get the feeling another block of emotes is going to appear. There's more. Anyway, it's really nice to hear from you. Uh, I will be going in a couple of minutes uh, because it is 2.30 in the afternoon. I've got to go and get some lunch in a little bit. Um, and you've got to have your breakfast as well because it's early morning. So yeah, I will be going in a second. Um, how about your Japanese learning? Because you obviously know some. How long have you been learning for? Have you been uh, learning for a while? And how are you learning? Are you learning like online or... Have you had real lessons? I'm interested to know. Sorry. Or are you going to send me more emotes? I mean, for me, I I learned some all on Duolingo. No way. So how does your Duolingo screen look? Because like I've got, oh, you can see it on the uh, screen capture. I've done the first section. And that's about it. Oh, you're learning French. We learned French at school in the UK. But to be completely honest, um, language learning in British secondary schools, at least when I was there, was really bad. Um, I, I started learning French in secondary school, not in primary school. Oh, you passed the, so you're ahead of me. You've passed the first checkpoint, right? Um, Oh, I, I've passed the first checkpoint as well. But again, that was two years ago. So I've got to redo all these exercises um, and try to get good. Yeah, I, I found that as an adult, I'm a lot more interested in learning languages. And I'm a lot more able to kind of put the effort in and to put it in the way that I want to put the effort in. So when I was younger... My grandma tried to teach me Dutch, like sporadically, but I never really picked it up. And then when I was about 10 years old, I bought a bunch of language learning books. And it was, you know, back then it was audio cassette tapes. It was a, you'd buy this package and there would be four audio cassette tapes, like built into this horrible plastic cover. And there would be a thick book with no pictures and all text. And... I might still have it at home in the UK. And I was really eager to learn Dutch. I had met my cousins for the first time and I wanted to be able to talk to them. And I, my father bought this, this course for me. I don't know how much money he spent on it. And I need to apologize to my father because I started looking at it and I gave up. I just gave up. You can speak Dutch, English, French, and you want to learn Japanese, German, Swedish, and Spanish, maybe Chinese too. As far as I know, there isn't too much of a limit on how much you can learn. Um, I have friends from Malaysia who speak five languages, right? They speak, uh, they speak English, they speak two dialects of Chinese, they speak Malay and they speak, some of them speak like different Indian dialects, I, I, I think. Um, 
that's what they've told me anyway. And yeah, go for it. I mean, you've already got Dutch, you've already got English, right? Keep going, right? Learn everything that you want to learn. Uh, and the younger you do it, the better. I mean, I was super lucky that I started learning Cantonese um, when I was about 18 years old, 17 or 18. And it, I learned a lot quicker. Um, partly by being interested in it and using my own method to learn eight languages is that possible try it try it see whether it's possible or not and who knows like while you're learning you might find that you have a particular affinity for one language or you might find that you know you start to like one more than the others and who knows where that could lead? Let's say you start learning German and, you know, you suddenly find that you really like this or you start learning Japanese and you find that you really like this. And that could lead to something later on. I mean, I'm here in Hong Kong. And when I was 15 or 16, I had no idea that one day I would end up in Hong Kong. Um, but I started learning Cantonese and... I, I learned German for three years at school, by the way, um, and my German isn't great. But yeah, you keep going with it and see, you know, which languages really take your fancy. Um, to be completely honest, I kind of wished I'd learned Japanese when I was 18 instead of Cantonese. Then I might be living in Japan. It's a really nice place. Um, Hong Kong's a nice place too. I mean, Forget everything that we said before. Uh, I still like Hong Kong, and it is it is definitely home for me. Um, but if I'd learned Japanese when I was 14, 15, 16, who knows? I might be there right now. If I'd learned Dutch, I might know a little bit more about the Dutch education system as well. Mm. My experience of the British education system was, you know, fine. Um, I went to Catholic school in the UK, uh, which has, you know, whatever baggage Catholic school has. It was okay. Um, the Hong Kong education system is quite tough. Um, kids in Hong Kong primary schools have so much homework to do. Um, it's quite focused on academic results. And I, even though the Hong Kong education system is supposed to be based on the British education system, or at least it was, uh, it is a lot more academic. That said, you know, the kids here do end up doing better in some subjects. So like the mathematics level in Hong Kong schools is probably higher than, it, than my mathematics level was when I was studying in the UK. Um, but the kids here seem to have a lot more pressure and there was a little bit less pressure in the UK. Uh, when you say that the Dutch education system is nice, do you mean that it's relaxed or do you mean that you're learning a lot? Right? Um, I mean, sure, we, we, we want to have a relaxed environment at school, but do you feel like you're learning a lot? Obviously, the English education in the Netherlands is great because otherwise, how would everybody speak so well? But uh, the Dutch education system is different for everyone because it's based on what the pupil needs and what his skill capability is. Sounds good. It sounds good. Uh, in Hong Kong, some people do really well academically, but it's also easy for students to like, you know, slip between the cracks and, you know, for kids who I think could do better and who could get more out of their education. But there's a lot of kids who just give up. Uh, you follow the highest high school education. I hope you're doing well at school. Are you still in school right now? Because I don't know with like the coronavirus lockdowns and things. But here in Hong Kong, um, the coronavirus situation has been coming and going 
And now we're kind of entering into what they're calling here the fourth wave of coronavirus. And schools are going to be closing on Wednesday, I think, this coming Wednesday. And the kids will be home and studying from home. So, uh, excuse me, spoiler alert, I might not be able to steal the PC this time next week. I've been doing these live streams uh, every Monday. Uh, this is my third one. I've been doing this every Monday. And I might not be able to do it this time next week. It depends on whether my boy has to uh, use the computer for online study or not. So I might be changing the schedule. Uh, I know a lot about different things. I'm pretty much the first class nerd. Be the nerd. 100% be the nerd. I was the nerd at school. And uh, yeah, I I think it served me well uh, being the class nerd. Yeah, uh, this time next week, I might not be on at the same time. Uh, you might want to follow me on Twitter. If you go to the, the down, down here, um, at Anthony Kelly Yip, because I will put a post on there saying when I'm online. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to be online at the same time next week, but I might have to shift it around a little bit, uh, depending on my boy's schedule and uh, whether or not he needs to use the PC. We've only got one PC. We can't afford two. Anyway, uh, you take care. Enjoy your online lessons. I am ending soon. I need to go out. It is nearly three o'clock. I've got to go and grab some lunch and then I've got some work to do in the afternoon. But it's been really nice chatting with you. And uh, yeah, jump in again if you're online and remember to say hello. It's uh, It's been good. Take care. And if you are still studying on Duolingo, add me. Um, my Duolingo is Anthony Kell, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-K-E-L. If you add me on there, then I'll be able to see whether you're, uh, whether you're studying hard or not, and you'll be able to see whether I'm studying hard or not as well. Okay? Yeah, so it's been nice to see you, and uh, hopefully I'll be back here at the same time next week, okay? You take care, Andy. Bye-bye. See you next time. How do I turn this off? Bye.